welcome back to another daily walk. Well, I thought we would actually walk again on this one. No, I'm not going back to this format. I think it is actually a little bit distracting, but um, I have about a mile and a half back through these badlands to uh, the van. So I thought I'd go ahead and use this time to chat about what I wanted to talk about on a daily walk. And that is going to be seeking truth where it can be found. And this is an important discussion and conversation because I'm reading this book on Jim Jones and the Malachi 4 prophecies right now. It turns out that throughout history, there have been, particularly in the American landscape, a lot of pastors who've claimed to be the reincarnation of Elijah coming from the end of Malachi 4. If you have a look at that, it talks about how I will send my prophet um, Elijah as a forerunner to Christ. Now, the Bible tells us that that was John the Baptist. And as we talk about that, um, first and foremost, people ask John the Baptist, are you Elijah? Are you the, the one they said would come? John the Baptist says no, but Jesus says yes. That was indeed, um, that was indeed him. So, Let's go ahead and take Jesus at his word and think that Jesus is probably telling the truth when he tells us that John the Baptist, not Jim Jones or a bunch of other crazy weirdos, is actually the, um, the return of Elijah the prophet. But all these guys were talking, and the story that got me going, I think it was Howie maybe, I um, can't remember for sure, but um, this gentleman here, he came to... United States and had a healing ministry back in the 1800s, early 1900s, and he would have all of these healing ministries by which people would come in and uh, be healed, and it basically became this giant crazy cult. He started saying that he was Elijah, and in some places he had a lot of success, and then he'd go to other places and people would see right through it. The doctors would come in and say, no. This guy's not a prophet. This guy's not Elijah. And um, then the newspapers would run him out of town. And then they're like, well, I'm being persecuted for my faith. And so being persecuted for his faith, he decides they're going to go ahead and uh, go back to the place where people thought that uh, he was a, you know, an actual prophet. And that was the Chicago area. So back then, it was well known who this guy was and what he was doing. And, um, but at that point in time, at that juncture, what happened is the people in Chicago, they chose not to, um, believe all of the doctors and all the people saying that, no, people are not actually being healed. And so the news media is trumping him up as the next prophet and the next great savior, ignoring all of the negatives, reporting only all of the positives that they would like to report. And that was really what was, um, what was going on from there. And so what I looked at is I said, well, that's exactly what the news media is doing today. The news media is pointing us all sorts of lies. They're giving us all sorts of errors. And they're pointing us in a direction that they want us to go. Not a direction that is true. Not a direction that is right. And you see this with all of these high-profile cases. Kyle Rittenhouse, who was absolutely unequivocally defending himself from violent attackers, they are still all over him being a white supremacist and a Nazi and all this, which is not true at all. But Jesse Smollett, who is absolutely liar, absolutely lied about it. Here's the New York Times says, well, the jury chose to believe. Like, no, <laughs> the jury didn't choose to believe. The jury came to the appropriate decision based on the available facts of the case. And so what struck me about this is way back in the 1900s, early 1900s here, the media journalists were pointing people in the wrong way because of their bias and what they wanted to do. And that is so happening today. That is so incredible that we have to stop and think and consider what, um, what is being taught to us. And so, as Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That is the perspective that we have to take. So as we look at what is being told to us through any form of mainstream media, 
we have to be deeply cautious. We have to look at uh, what the truth is. We have to seek alternative methods. And as I was having a discussion with a friend the other day, and he said there's no good media sources out there right now. And that's true. There's almost none. This is why we rely so much on people just boots on the ground getting actual data for us to look at. That would be the case with uh, the Sandman situation. You know, here's uh, Nick Sandman sitting there, just sitting there, and a dude comes up and pounds a drum in front of him. Well, we had full context of everything that's going. We had an hour before the event. We had half hour after that particular situation. And every news media decided to cut down and create a narrative that they wanted to preach. And that was really a godless thing here. And that's really the factor we have to stop and look at is understand that the news media is not your friend. Whether that's Fox or CNN, they are um, teaching things from a biases that they don't really want to have. They want to convince you of their narrative. Whether that's the narrative of COVID, whether that's the narrative of racism, whether that's the narrative of, of um, ex, you know, white supremacy, all these are types of things that they're talking about. And the reality is they are causing more problems for society, just like those reporters in Chicago in the early 1900s. They caused a lot of shipwrecked lives for preaching how amazing this guy was when he was an absolute heretic. And so this is why I want you to look out, look for actual boots on the ground, look for full-fledged context. Don't sit there and listen to CNN when they say it's a fiery but mostly peaceful protest. I'm sorry, I think that was this specific line from uh, MSNBC. The guy's reporting there's literally a police station on fire behind him. It's mostly peaceful here. Uh, no, look at the context. Don't look at the people pushing the agenda. Seek the truth in every matter. And this ties over into the Christian life. Seek the matter and the truth as far as um, what you're hearing from churches, what you're hearing reading in books, what you're hearing in all these different places. You have to understand that... Uh, sorry, I'm on this giant hill now. <laughs> I've come all the way up there. Uh, we have to understand that... Um, Truth is found in the Word of God, not in people's exposition. And someone's exposition can help you understand some things, but never take a single person's point, nor a party to somebody's group as a single point. Examine everything for yourself. That's what Paul told the Brians. You guys were more noble. You took everything I said and compared it against the scriptures to see if what I was saying is true. And that's what you need to do. Seek the truth in all things. Don't rely on the news media to tell you what is right. So there is uh, my thoughts on this daily walk. Thanks for coming, following along. Have a look over at the website at rwalkinchrist.com. And we will see you guys next time.